Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to show you a new feature in KSQL as of Confluent Platform 5.0, nested data and the struct type. Now, suppose you've got a topic with some order information in it. In our case here, the topic's data is in Avro format, and the schema is therefore managed by the Confluent Schema Registry. We need to start by registering this topic with KSQL using the createStream command. Because we're using the schema registry, we don't have to specify the field names or data types, and the createStream statement is a lot easier. We can now look at that schema using the describe command, and it's picked all that up from the schema registry. But notice, what is this struct thing there? That's a compound data type, as you can see, combining city, state, and zip code. And it's called address. Now, I can treat address as a single object in a query like this. You see, we're getting order ID, item ID, and address for each order. And we get all of the fields of the addresses printed out there for each row. If you want to get at the individual fields of a struct, just use the arrow operator like this. Now the results come out as their own columns in the results. We can also use them as predicates, as you see here. Now in this select, we only care about orders from city 63, which by the way, have you ever been? It's really lovely in the spring and it hasn't really been discovered yet. So I just can't recommend it enough, but we actually have to wait a minute for this query to produce results since city 63 being somewhat rustic doesn't really account for that much of our orders traffic. Ah, but there's an order. And you can see that the struct fields are really behaving as just normal fields in the queries. If I wanted to destructure a struct or take it apart, we can do it like so. We're creating a new stream here with the city and state fields of the address struct as individual fields in the new stream. Describing the stream and doing a select star on it, we see that we have indeed flattened out that structure. We can even dive a layer deeper and look at the underlying Kafka topic. We can do this with the print statement from the KSQL command line. If we print the records of the flattened streams topic, we still see distinct city and state fields in the records or the messages in that topic. The Confluent Schema Registry makes Avro data very convenient. But as we're about to see, structs also work with JSON data. You can see by looking at this JSON data here, we definitely have some nested elements. And now base is a scalar, but main and chord, uh, those are both nested data. Weather is even an array, and it's an array of a uh, nested element. So we've got some complex structure here. And these JSON elements are going to be represented as structs within KSQL. So let's declare a schema for this data. Because this is a pretty complicated statement, I've actually worked it out in a text editor and broken it up into multiple lines to make it easier to look at. We want to create a stream called weather source. And for each bit of nested data in the JSON, we create a struct type. After declaring it a struct, we put angle brackets and then a comma delimited list of the field names and types in the struct. Recall that weather is an array and we declare arrays in much the same way. The type of the things in that weather array is itself a struct. So we declare an array of structs and then describe the fields inside the struct accordingly. Let's actually run this beast of a create stream statement. With the stream now created, let's see how ksql describes it using the describe command. You can see each one of our structs present there, including the array of structs. Now let's use ksql to explore that data a little bit. Recall the field called main. It has fields in it like temperature and pressure and humidity. And I'm going to do a select including the name of the weather station and the temperature, the pressure, and the humidity. All of those are inside the main struct. There's a struct called main. We use the same arrow notation to access the fields of the struct as we did in Avro. We also have a field called dt, which is the date and time in epic format. That's the number of milliseconds since January 1, 1970. That's the standard epic format. It's a great way to store a timestamp, but it's a little bit of a bummer to look at. Happily, ksql has a function called timestamp to string, which we're using here. And the actual timestamp data we have in the actual data is in seconds, so we have to multiply it by 1,000 to get to the proper epic format that the ksql function expects. We can also provide a format string to the function like you see. 
Now we can read the times of these readings a bit more clearly. But we also have information about the country the weather station is in, the sunset and sunrise times, and that weather array. That's a more detailed account of weather conditions at the time. Let's put these to use. This query pulls out the country from the CIS field, uh, the freeform text description of the weather. And remember, by the way, that weather is an array, because there could be multiple forms of weather, like it could be windy and raining at the same time, for example. Uh, here, we're just pulling out the description of the first entry in the weather array. I'm also getting the sunrise and sunset times, which of course we'll just format as a time and not a date, since date doesn't make a lot of sense for sunrise or sunset. And there are the results. But that, of course, was a non-persistent query, just an experimental select at the command line. We have to hit Control-C to stop it, and once we do, it's gone. Now, to turn that into a persistent query, we add create stream as, so the query will run in the background and populate a Kafka topic with the results. Well, in case equal, it's straightforward to convert that JSON stream into Avro just by saying so in the with clause, like you see here. And if we describe that stream, we see all their fields with their proper types. None of them is a struct anymore. And finally, we can do a simple select on that stream and see all our data. So anytime your data has some internal nesting to it, structs have become an essential tool in your toolbox for handling that data in KSQL. Check it out for yourself and go to confluent.io slash KSQL for more.